Welcome back to Secondhand Overland. I'm your host, Matt Kester. Today we are reviewing the TID Radio model number BL-1 Bluetooth program. This is the product that was sent to us for review and it's something that I have a lot of interest in because I believe that there needs to be more integration with Bluetooth in this whole world. It's it's stupid not to utilize our phones as a, well, a universal remote control basically is what they are. And with the ability to have that Bluetooth inside your phone to talk to this little dongle here, uh, you then have the ability to program or read programming from your radio. So it's a little device that plugs into the same holes you would plug the programming cable into your Baofeng or certain other radios that use that K-type plug. And what it does is it allows your phone to interface with the radio and program it or in the inverse, receive the programming that's already in your radio. Essentially what it does is it acts kind of as a standalone version of Chirp living inside of your phone that transmits and receives the programming from the radio and it enables you to get in and change every setting that you could inside of Chirp. It does have almost all of the same supported radios and they keep adding to the list, which it's cool though because it kind of works as a complement to what you would be doing with Chirp. What is it? Well, basically what you get from TID Radio is this here guy, uh, the model number BL1 programmer. It's designed to work with the good old fashioned trusty Baofeng UV5R precision engineering. And you plug it into the headphone port and it goes to town. That's all fine and dandy. There are some previous reviews because this is the second version of this programmer out there in the world uh, that talk about some issues that the hardware itself really faces and the company's pretty much tackled that um, as far as what you get and what you pay for. Now, now, most people got into this radio thing because of this radio right here and that's the good old fashioned UV5R. Now this is TID Radio's version of a UV5R but it's just like everybody else's version of a UV5R, it's just a Baofeng UV5R. And they sent us one to go with this review, which isn't bad because when they sent it to us, they also sent this, which is like all of the parts and accessories you'll ever want. Programming cable, microphone, hand mic, car jack, dangle mic, radio belt clip, all of that. And uh, they do offer this on Amazon for a decent price as far as how UV5Rs and accessories go. So uh, it's a good option if you're starting out. If you're watching this video, you've probably already started out. So you probably already have a UV5R laying around and that's why you're watching the video. So there's no need to review this. It's a UV5R. It's the radio that started the whole thing, the whole movement rests on this little $25 Amazon wonder. I never had one of these. I got into this because I got sent a radio from a vendor that, well, anyway, realized that their particular brand or style of what was going on wasn't, uh, well, I had outgrown it in about five minutes. So I then moved on to uh, these ocean radios and I, and I skipped the Baofeng part of my GMRS slash ham radio operator journey if you will. Well, that's changed today because the folks at TED Radio have sent me one so we can go ahead and make this review. I don't know a damn thing about programming it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use TED Radio's programmer here to, uh, to get started. You roll into this Ode Master app and it opens up and here you go right off the bat, it's gonna ask you if you want to be a part of the Ode Master Assistant Annie, I, I don't know what that is, or the Amazon order support or the email subscription to provide you with the latest news. Uh, they're asking if you want to be in channels of this social media app thing that they're trying to build around this thing. Um, I go ahead and click them all off because I don't want to be in these groups because I didn't come to this to be in social media. The POC thing, this isn't a big thing here. This might be a big thing across the pond, but in North America, I don't know anybody who uses these POC things. Like this was cool when Haytel was popular. That's about it now. Nobody gives a shit about this. Nobody likes this. Don't spend any more of your resources, TID Radio, developing this. You're wasting your time. You go over to programming. Now, you gotta connect this thing with a Bluetooth app every time. You gotta repair it every time you wanna go through programming it. And then you select the model of your radio. 
Now, there are quite a few different brands and varieties of radio. It's not just TID radios, radios, which is pretty cool. You've got all of the Baofeng family. So we're gonna go to TID radios, TD UV5R, and then we're gonna read from it and see what's programmed in there. So you can see this thing going to town, doing its magic here. Beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 beep. Is the read complete? All right, so then we go into there. And now this tutorial always seems to pop up on me. I can't get rid of it. And then when you have this thing where you try to cross out the tutorial, you're met with some very not intuitive language. And this is a struggle, and we're gonna talk about this. This is one of my critiques of this whole thing. But we're gonna talk about it later. Anyway, I just hit cancel. I, I don't know why I would wanna to save to keep seeing the introduction thing. I think I would wanna to save to not keep seeing the introduction thing, if you know what I mean. It's very confusing. Then you're in your programming file. With the TID Radio TD UV5R, they've got like 127 slots for storage in the radio. And you can just simply go right through here and program frequencies to your heart's content. You can manually plug them in. And then you've got your uh, Swelch PL tones, the decode, encode, your transmit power, and wide, low, high range, <clears throat> wide band, narrow band range. There are some other things you can actually program functionality in the radio that would have been functionality that would have been programmable via chirp. It's in here, so you can change your Vox settings and your timeout timers and your squelch levels. Uh, and then, gotta turn that DTDM off. I've, Played with this radio the other night and somehow I got confused in the programming and had a DTMF opening coming on every time I keyed up. So I went to one of my favorite repeaters and keyed up and instead of broadcasting my call sign, I broadcast a bunch of diddly 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 das and then promptly got my ass chewed out for using DTMF on a DMRS repeater. One of the cool things that I've seen that's in here that uh, you might be interested in as a viewer, someone who likes GMRS radios but wants to buy like a truly unlocked dual band like this is, you go down to these re receive transmit lists. They've got lists built in here with all of the NOAA frequencies, the MERS frequencies, the GMRS frequencies, the FRS frequencies preloaded. So if you wanted to make this UV5 RA, it won't be part 15 compliant or part 95 compliant, but as close to the structure of a part 95 GMRS radio that you would find, you just use that and you write it to the radio and the radio programs in here. And Okay, so we've got that in there. It's been programmed. Now let's rattle through some channels. Basically turn this into a 30 slot GMRS radio. So um, you wanted the profile of a GMRS radio. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Let's let's go ahead and make this into a, a MERS radio. Make a MERS radio. Oh, go ahead. So here's something interesting. As I'm just testing this just now, we had a questionnaire pop up. Hello, we are making a questionnaire in order to know your true situation of usage and then optimize the odd master. Okay, well, what's my mobile phone system? It's iOS. Do you have problems during registration and logging in? Yes, I do. And I'm, I'm having a problem with that. We'll talk about that. Uh, which way did you register mobile phone? What would you like to add to improve? Drop. POC. Well, actually, see my YouTube video. <sighs> All right, so that's how you program it. It's not hard, and then, like, I, like we said, we have this write and transmit list where you can add all these pieces and components in, but one thing you can do after you do all that is it asks if you wanna save that programming profile that you just made or you just downloaded in. You can go ahead and save that, I'll hit confirm. And then those programming settings are actually able to be shared with other people through this weird social media app thing that they're trying to build. Now, if you see that Nike name thing coming up a lot, that's because <laughs> that's the default name. Um, they didn't spell it as nickname, they spelled it as Nike name. And it's so indicative of what's going on with this app. You guys, I appreciate what you're doing, so don't, don't take this the wrong way, TID Radio. By the way, TID Radio, you might want to realize that people here in uh, the good old America, 
like to be a little bit lazy with their words. So if you say that TID radio or TID radio real quick or real fast, it ends up becoming TID radio. And uh, as you all know, TID radio is, oh, well, TID radio. Get my point? You got it. So you gotta work on getting maybe some native English speaking support with what you've got going on to at least check the copy on your website. Also, there are some menu sections in here where you've completely left Chinese characters to the point that I can't navigate the app. Um, I understand we got some issues to work out between two languages here, guys, but if you're gonna sell this thing in North America, you've really gotta work on getting everything in here dialed up so that somebody like me who has lived in good old America my whole life and never really adopted a foreign language a f***ing clue on how to use this. So I, my recommendation to you would be to drop the POC, drop kind of what you're trying to do with that social networking aspect, maybe pare it down to some segmented forums inside of there where there's like maybe a space to share. Well, you've got the space to share the programming profiles, but you don't really have that segmented out. It's just a long list and it's not very searchable and it's not very neat and it's not very organized. Uh, get with an app developer or somebody who can go ahead and build you a better database or forum part to that app so that that is more of a area where people can get interested in going to and sharing those things because I think there would be a lot of interest for people in certain regional locations to actually share programming lists. That's, that's something that people would actually really be interested in um, and there's an opportunity to improve. The other thing, check the copyright. Like your, some of your windows are ambiguous and I, I don't really understand. And um, you've got to make it so when I want to turn off a default setting, I can understand the window of how to do that so that every time I log into this thing, I don't have to see the tutorial on how to do something. I can just jump in and do it. That being said, this is like a $23 item and it's very handy. Um, there is another aspect to it that I was reading about I could not make work. And again, this is another thing where they've got to go ahead and expend the effort and the resources into uh, streamlining this, making it more understandable, knocking down that brain language barrier so that somebody like me can go ahead and find what they want to use and use it. You can literally now use a Mac to program via Chirp, which is something that went away ostensibly the last time they upgraded to Big Sur, I believe it was, you just lost the ability to use Chirp off of your Mac. You can download it, but you can't use it to push any kind of programming back and forth between your radio and your Mac. Well, now with what they have with their online version of this, there's kind of like a browser-based section that will then store your programming files after you've typed them in in the computer, because let's be honest, you can just cut and paste that from the registry lists or from my GMRS or whatever into Chirp or into their software and then it'll be in this cloud that you just send it back and forth to the app and then go ahead and download it back to the phone. Now, I couldn't get it to work. Every time I try to log into this thing, it's I'm using the correct login that I used when I created it with the phone and I'm using uh, that same password, verified it a bajillion times, but it's still telling me that either A, my account doesn't exist or B, I'm using the wrong password. Not optimal, especially not optimal when I'm sitting here trying to set up the video talking about the product. Uh, Overall, is it perfect? F no, it's far from perfect. Is it $22 perfect? Well, I would spend $22 on this, um, especially knowing that these guys are putting the effort into developing this further. And what I mean by that is they're showing the effort by providing you with questionnaires, asking how to improve your thing. They've also hit me up four times since I have agreed to make this video, asking for feedback and improvements. And they've also just been adding more radios that this software will work with as time goes on. They've actively sought out to improve their product. And I think that's a good thing. And, and the improvements they're making are largely software improvements, which are things that can be handled rather quick and rather efficiently. They use the first round to get the hardware right. And the hardware works. And, um, no, it's not waterproof and you don't want to leave it hanging off the side of the radio because I know I'm going to snag that on something and break it in half, but as something just to keep in your pocket, to have a programming device and be able to 
add or take away programming to your radio with just the other tool that's in your pocket, it's a great feature. There's no other way to use your phone to program a radio that I know of unless you are some sort of computer programming whiz and you've figured out a way to use your wife's kitchen aid and I'm trying to make something stupid, but you basically are a nerd. Otherwise, you get this and it works. Now that they've got the hardware a little bit better, I probably would buy this with my own money and I'll put a link in the description below for it. Uh, other than that, there's not a lot to be said. It's, uh, it's Bluetooth programming and it's technology and somebody's actually putting the effort into trying to make it better technology. So TID Radio, I applaud you. Not quite perfect yet, but you're getting there. And thank you. As always, I'm Matt Kester. Be good.